Hi everyone. There's been some really great questions in the comments lately and yes, I do read every single one of them. So I thought I would take some time to answer them in case some of you are wondering the same thing. Question number one comes from Aaron Coomer. Hey Callie, how are you? I've got a quick question. For my pumpkins, do you have to water the entire plant from end to end or just at the base where the plants started growing when they were seedlings earlier in the summer? Thank you for your help. I've got two big ones that are fully orange and four more that are green and growing good. First of all, Aaron, thanks so much for your question. This is a great question. And I'm also super excited for you that you're gonna be able to harvest pumpkins in time for Halloween. Well, I don't have any pumpkins to show you, but I do have some squash, which is a very similar plant. They grow in a very similar way. Here we have a scallop squash, and you can see it's trailing over this raised bed. And what you wanna do is just water at the stem. The plant only needs water at the roots because that way the water gets down to the roots so the plant can be nice and healthy and the roots can uptake the water and the nutrients as it grows and you can also add some organic water soluble fertilizer into your watering can so you can feed your pumpkin plant at the same time because they are heavy feeders you don't want to use a water soluble fertilizer that's high in nitrogen use something like a worm casting tea like vermisteria worm castings something that will just provide some slow and steady growth for your watermelon another little tip here or for your pumpkin another little tip here is you can see that the stem of my squash here there's no leaves on it so i've trimmed off off the leaves up until about the first flower or so because it's just taking extra energy from the plant and the plant really doesn't need the leaves below the first flower or the first squash. So definitely don't water the leaves because you can actually cause powdery mildew if the leaves get wet. So great question Erin, thanks so much, really appreciate it and good luck with your pumpkins. Question number two comes from Why Try Hard? And this one was from our How to Harvest Watermelon video just a couple of days ago. And Why Try Hard asks, I like your videos. I planted some sugar baby the first time, but I don't know if I need to harvest it. It has the yellow spot on the bottom, but the tendril is still green, or do I need to wait for the tendril to dry up? Thanks. Why try hard? Great question. And you definitely want to harvest your watermelon at just the right time for the peak of sweetness. So the yellow spot on the bottom, what we're talking about is when the watermelon rests on the ground. It needs to have this nice yellow spot, not white or not a green spot. So this is one sign of ripeness. However, I feel like the biggest clue for ripeness is in the tendril. So you really want to wait for both if you're growing watermelon that are resting on the ground. So let me just show you what I mean here. This watermelon, we haven't harvested it yet. You look at the stem that's closest to the melon, which is this one right here, and then you look for the tendril closest to that, which is this little tiny tendril right here that's wound around the trellis. When it's nice and brown and crispy, that's a sure sign that your watermelon is ripe, and that's when you want to harvest it. Why try hard? Thanks so much for your watermelon question and keep on trying hard and you'll be harvesting those melons like a pro in no time. Question number three comes from Fred P. Sonic from our watermelon harvest and tasting video just a couple of days ago. And Fred says, wait a second now, hold on there. Callie Kim gets a slice, camera guy gets a bite, but my main man Mac doesn't even get a taste. He even had his watermelon kerchief on to take care of the juices. Maybe next time Mac, wait patiently buddy. Well, we decided it's time to give Mac a little bit of a taste. He's usually not much of a garden veggie or fruit kind of guy, but we're gonna give it a go here. So Mac, Mac, we've got a slice of watermelon for you. He's thinking about it. Let's try a, a little bite, maybe that'll help. Here you go, Mac, it's nice and sweet. <laughs> Come on, no. Mac. Let's try again. Think. Here you go, Mac. Nope. Nope. No go. All right, Mac. Thanks for being a good sport, Mac. Question number four comes from Danielle Belding. Do you think I could plant tomatoes now in Huntington Beach? My tomato plants produced a ton, but started getting yellowish spots on the tops, and my plants are dying now. And Danielle, absolutely yes. In a frost-free zone here in Southern California or any other frost-free zone, you can definitely plant some tomatoes now. However, 
I prefer and recommend planting smaller sized tomatoes so you have more time for them to grow from seed to harvest before the weather gets too cold. So right now I've got a golden nugget tomato. It's a small dwarf plant about two feet tall. You can see it's still producing a ton of tomatoes. I actually planted this one late in the summer but it wouldn't be too late to start this particular variety or Tiny Tim from seed and then what you can do is I recommend planting them in a container that way you can leave them out in the sun and even bring them indoors on cold days. So the, the little shorty container is a good one that you can actually leave outside or a smaller Cali Kim five gallon smart pots would work great for that and you can grab the Tiny Tim seeds over on my website in my container garden seed collection or my late summer garden seed collection. They're actually 20% 20, 20 off right now and you get a free onion seed collection with your purchase. So grab those Get your tomatoes started. If you're in a frost-free zone, you can often grow them in the late fall and even throughout the winter months. Good question and thanks for asking. Question number five is from Amy Gardner and this one again is about watermelon. Very popular topic right now on our YouTube channel. So Amy asks, I'm growing Jubilee watermelons vertically. When you make the sling to support the melon, should the melon be angled, upright, horizontal, or does it matter as long as the tension is off the stem. And the most important thing, Amy, great question by the way, is that the tension is off the stem. So it really doesn't matter how you put your sling or your support here. And this is a round watermelon. A Jubilee is a more longer oblong type of shape. But the most important thing is that you get the tension off the stem by lifting and slinging the support up just a little bit higher so there's no tension right here to break the stem and then you lose your melon. Amy, great question. I'm so proud of you for growing those Jubilee melons. They're not always the easiest melons to grow because they grow so large, but you're gonna absolutely love harvesting them and I really hope you enjoy it. Good luck. Thanks everyone for the great questions. Hope you found it helpful. Definitely keep us posted. And don't forget, 20% off all Cali Kim Seed Collections books, Cali Kim Smart Pots, and Garden Kits with the code fall vibes and you're also going to receive an onion seed collection and a grow your groceries magnet with your purchase and don't forget we only have a week left to grab your september fun fall green subscription box so many people are having a ton of fun growing their delicious tasty colorful salads with this box and you can get nine dollars off with the code fun fall greens over at calicamgardenhome.com thanks so much for watching we'll see you on the next video